see me star squiggle. Yes. I'm trying to film a video. That's a couple. There's a lot of books. Oh. There's 22 of them. Shut up, really? Yeah, and it's only the 28th. But I'm reading City of Ashes, so it's like big. You won't get through that. Is that, is that a challenge? <laughs> really? Hell yeah. I'm on page 130, I'm like, tomorrow. Tomorrow, I'm going to be like, I'm awake. I already fell asleep, and I went to bed at like 12 last night. I fell asleep like three times. Well, I didn't get off till like 1230, and then I was already asleep by then. Oh, okay. Because you guys didn't like me. Yep, that's it. So we're to pay for all the stuff that you can I know, buy me more things. Like, come on, Cole. <laughs> <laughs> he doesn't watch my videos. He just threatens to watch I my videos. He does. doesn't actually watch I think them. he does. I don't think so. Cole, do you watch my videos? See, we'll see if he answers. How would he answer that? He'll text me and be like, yes. <laughs> can I help you? Do you need something? <laughs> I was just going to say that we're conniving. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>, okay. <laughs> okay, I'll leave you there. Okay, bye. It's Jay, and today I am here with my June wrap-up part one. It's actually the 28th today, so I might read more books. I don't know, but so far for the month of June, I have read a total of 22 books. So, I'm probably going to break it down into three or four parts. I'm not sure yet, but you know, your girl reads way too much apparently. Without further ado, let us get started. So the first book that I read for the month of June is actually part of a booktube tour and it is run by Grace over at Loving Dem Books so I will leave her link down below and also the link to the booktube page if you want to be a host as well. Basically what happens is we are sent books for our honest review and then we either make a review or some kind of video promoting the book and what we thought of it. Blah blah blah. So if you want to check that out. It's all down there, so go check it out. Also, there are two giveaways for both of the books that I'm going to talk about, so those will be down below too if you want to check that out as well, because who doesn't love giveaways? First book is Deception Island by Bryn Kelly. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. I really enjoyed it. I have a full review of it if you want to check out my full thoughts. I'm not going to give them again since I have the full review, so you can check that out if you're interested. The second book that I read in June is also part of a booktube tour, and that is Genesis Girl by Jennifer Bardsley. I gave this book a 4 out of 5 as well. I thought it was really entertaining and I also have a full review of this. If you want to check that out, then, you know, check it out and then you can hear my full thoughts on this book as well. Gotta move over so I can fit the image here. Yeah. But the third book that I read for the month of June is Every Last Word by Tamara Ireland Stone. And I gave this book a 4.5 out of 5 on Goodreads. The book follows Samantha McAllister, who is your typical teenager. She's popular and she's kind of one of those like mean girls in high school. The only thing is, is that she has OCD, which is a mental disorder in which your brain basically fixates on a compulsion and it's all you can think about for that time being. One day Samantha meets a girl named Caroline and she instantly becomes friends with her, they really connect, and Caroline decides that she is going to show her a thing that she calls Poets Corner, which is basically a group of misfit students who come together at lunch on Tuesday and Thursday and they read poetry to each other. With the help of her newfound friends, Sam really breaks out of her shell and embraces who she is. I loved watching Sam grow as a character and how she let go of the negative people who impacted her life and really bonded with the people who helped her flourish. And I really enjoyed Poets Corner and how it like brought you into the secondary characters' minds and emotions. I really liked how you could see that. I thought the poetry was absolutely beautiful. I read Slam by Colleen Hoover. I have a review if you want to check that out and loved the poetry so much and I think that my favorite poem from this book was As If. I thought it was so good. I was like staring at it for the longest time. Definitely recommend reading the book just for that poem. I thought it was beautiful. I think the book really focused and touched on really important topics like depression and mental health and anxiety and things like that. I think that the author did a very effective job with touching on the subjects but not making it too like nerve-wracking if that makes sense. I also was able to call the big twist ending like halfway through the book. It was really obvious, but it didn't take away from the enjoyment of the story. Which is very surprising for me because usually I'm like, oh my god, but With this book I actually really liked it and it didn't bother me whatsoever. The fourth book that I read for the month of June is To All the Boys I've Loved Before by Jenny Han. 
I've been meaning to read this book for so long now. Everybody's telling me how cute it is and that I had to read it, so I finally read it. And I gave it a 4 out of 5 stars on Goodreads. It's about a girl named Laura Jean. And in order to get over the boys that she's loved, she writes them a letter and then puts her emotions away into this hat box that her mother gave her years ago. The letters were written to five boys in particular, the first being Josh, who is her next door neighbor and also her sister's ex-boyfriend, Peter, who is her first kiss, two boys from school, and one boy from camp. One day, these letters get sent out to the boys and it sets her off on the, this big adventure and it basically just follows the story of this adventure. And I actually thought it was really cute. I read it in like two sittings. It's very, very fast. And it was just really a cute, fluffy, contemporary read. I really, really liked the family dynamics of the book. I thought that it was so well done and I like how it was such a big part of the story and it wasn't really a focus that much on the romance aspect of it. It was more family dynamics. I think the balance between the two was really well done and I liked how it wasn't all primarily romance, romance, romance. It was kind of a nice mixture of both. I found Laura Jean to be kind of annoying. She was very naive and it was very irritating at times. I absolutely loved Peter. I thought he was adorable. Oh, totally rooting for Peter 100% all the way. I loved how hilarious he was even when he was being extremely cocky, which I usually hate in guys. Cockiness is like a no-no for me, but just something about Peter worked for me and I was like, bay and half, I love you. You're so cute. Go just made me angry the entire story, so I would not even waste my breath discussing her. Kitty, 100% my favorite character, like she's only 9 years old and she's already so sassy, she's definitely like comic relief that you needed in the story. Josh I was kind of like iffy about, I think that he was very selfish and self-centered and everything was to benefit himself which kind of bothered me, but overall very cute, very fluffy, super fast read. I recommend it if you want a little contemporary, quick, fast read. This is it. The fifth book that I read for the month of June is If You Find Me by Emily Murdoch. I love this book. I gave it a 4.5 stars out of 5 on Goodreads. I thought it was amazing, to be honest. This book follows 15-year-old Carrie, who has lived in a camper for the past 10 years with her mentally ill mother and her little sister Janessa. After a tragic incident that happened a couple years ago, Janessa has gone mute. One day their mother leaves and goes off to get supplies and she never returns. Two weeks later, Janessa and Carrie's father comes with a social worker and they take the two girls back to live with his new wife, Melissa, and their stepsister, Delaney. Six-year-old Janessa is having no troubles whatsoever going into her new life and adjusting accordingly, but Carrie has a secret that she has to keep in order to protect her little sister. The bond between Nessa and Carrie was so well written, you could really feel how much they cared for each other, and it was really heartbreaking seeing how much Carrie sacrificed in order to keep Nessa safe. I think that the writing in the book was so beautiful and so well done, and the flashbacks into Carrie's life in the forest really brought an interesting aspect to the story. I think that Carrie was such a great character, she was so complex, and she was a little bit mature for her age, granted she did go through a lot, so maybe that's why, but I absolutely loved her voice. I thought she was such an amazing main character. Janessa was such a little angel. I loved her character so much. She was so cute, and just the love that, like, radiated off of her. It was just so good to read. Delaney was a super brat, and I hated her so much. The parents, Melissa, and... I don't remember the dad's name, but Carrie's dad. They were such good parents to the girls. It was just, I just loved the whole family, all the characters. They were just so well done. The book definitely deals with some sensitive topics for some people, but 100% I would recommend this book. I thought it was amazing. The last book that I'm going to talk about for this part of the wrap-up. It's part one. I think there's going to be at least three more, maybe four, depending if I finish any more books for the month of June. But it is Troll Fell by Katherine Langrish, and I gave this book a two out of five stars on Goodreads. I didn't like it, and I was really depressed that I didn't like it, because, like, can we just check out this cover? Do you see it? Do you see it? There's, there's like, the little goblins looking at you. Do you see that? Do you see that? Because the door opens, and do you see how pretty this cover is? It's so pretty! But the book, the book is not, it's not, it's not good. The book follows Pierre Olfsen, and his father just died. When attending his father's funeral, his two terrible uncles come 
and basically whisk him away from everything he's ever loved. When Pierre discovers that Grimm and Balder, who are his two uncles, are planning on selling him and his new friend Hild to the trolls, he must figure out how to stop this. It is a very fast read. I'm pretty sure I read it in one or two sittings. It's targeted at a much younger audience than what I am. I'm 20 years old and I just felt that it was not my level of reading. I think it would be good for someone a lot younger than me. I was definitely hoping for more trolls when I read the book. It was mostly just a focus on Pierre and how he thought his life was terrible, which I mean it was because his uncles were like abusive and terrible human beings, but I just wanted more trolls because like if you're going to call a book troll fell, where are the trolls? Like it was the last like 20 pages when trolls were actually in it. I'm not impressed without my trolls. I didn't like Pierre as a main character. He was 12 and he definitely acted like a little coward. Anytime anything happened to him, he was like, Oh my god, my life is terrible. Hilda, help me. I just, I didn't care for him. I didn't care for Hild. I didn't care for any of the characters. And it just wasn't, wasn't for me. The book was also, like, really morbid. Like, it talked a lot about death and, like, abuse. And I was like, this is a book for, like, eight-year-olds. I, okay, sure, we'll go with it. But it was real dark, and I don't know. I wouldn't want my eight-year-old reading this book. I, no, just no. Alright guys, so that was the first six books that I read for the month of June. If you find me, I forgot the name of the book. I tried, failed, like usual, what's new? Ha!